That's Nick. And that's Joseph, and today we're here to talk about Destry Rides Again, which will be released uh, on the Criterion Collection on Blu-ray um, April 14th, 2020. Uh, it was originally released in 1939, uh, directed by George Marshall. The story is about a small town. It's set in like the 18... Like late 1800s? Yeah, uh, a made-up uh, fictional town called Bottleneck. Yeah, like a like a oaky, dope. I don't know how you call those like cowboy. You know where they have saloons mm -hmm. and it's dirt and horses. Yeah, Gold Rush era. Gold Rush. Okay, yeah. I'm ignorant. Um, it's a small town that's kind of like corrupt. Mm -hmm. Like they're all just like drinking and gambling, and the mayor's in cahoots with the bar owner, and mm -hmm. there's no sort of like justice. the The film opens with the sheriff being killed because he's trying to like exact the law he's trying to practice law enforcement so the town drunk mm -hmm. is made sheriff by the mayor like as a joke mm -hmm. because they assume like this fucking drunk's not going to do anything but he actually takes this shit seriously and he keeps talking about this the this old sheriff named destry mm -hmm. he used, used to be his deputy mm -hmm. and he's like destry has a son and once this fool gets back in town, he's going to straighten everyone out. So then here comes Destry's son, played by Jimmy, um, Stewart. Jimmy Stewart. And he's a little soft. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he likes to talk. He doesn't like, well, we all know Jimmy Stewart. Like, he's a soft talker. He doesn't want to carry a gun. So they make fun of him. They basically call him a sissy. Mm -hmm, yeah. They don't take him seriously. But obviously, he um, uses his wits to get everyone in shape. Mm -hmm. Primarily, like, the main... Bitch in Town. Frenchie. Played by Marlena Dietrich. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um Yeah. It's a it's a classic story. It is. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm very happy to see this make criterion. It's probably my favorite non Joseph von Sternberg Dietrich uh, vehicle. Okay. Uh, so th this was the, so of course she had a tour affair with Jimmy Stewart as she was wont to do with many of her uh, co-stars, male and female, uh, leading to apparently an abortion that both her daughter um, and s I forget who else. Uh, You're just telling all her business. Um, How does that relate to this movie? <laughs> <laughs> she was actually uh, thinking about retiring from filmmaking okay. uh, because her last several pick because she stopped making films with uh, Von Sternberg uh, with Devil Is a Woman, which is 35, and her next few pictures after this bombed, including uh, Angel with Ernst Lubitsch, which just uh, was released on Kino Lorber. Um, so she, and, and then she had to do some convincing. Joe Pasternak, the producer, uh, was lobbying for her, and she's like, what am I gonna do in a Western? Um, this is also the second version of the film. There was an earlier uh, a film starring Tom Mix, uh, and then the George Marshall uh, remade it in 1954, starring Audie Murphy as Destry. So, yeah, Marlena Dietrich in a Western, I mean, it's a comedy. Right, and it, this revitalized her career. But the film is probably most famous for uh, a fucking excellent catfight sequence between her and Una Merkel uh, in a bar that was actually unchoreographed, filmed in one take, uh, and they're broken. it's broken up by Jimmy Stewart dumping water on them. Now that they filmed several takes of, uh, which there were many complaints about by those stars. Uh, but the, the, it's That's, something but to But it's behold. a really good scene. Yeah. She has a couple of musical numbers that are funny <gasps> because she's not a great singer. Oh, see, and, that, and the lyrics are funny. Now that's arguable because some people find her to be a great singer. I shouldn't have said that. She has a very distinct style oh, yes. of singing that, um, you know, as she she's grew, no Billie Holiday. No, as she grew older, uh, somebody, I forget what critic said, it was like watching an aristocratic crow. <laughs> but she looks great. Uh, yeah. She's... Uh, she's venomous. Oh yes, yeah. You know, so the thing is, um, she when she was convinced to do it, von Sternberg himself said, "I made you into a goddess," and this film like gives you clay feet and brings you down to the mud. And it really is interesting if you're familiar with her uh, filmography. Like this is the first film where we see her. She's not glamour. She's a fucking awful bitch. She's selfish. Um, but she looks great. She looks great. Yeah. Uh, but but she even lets that image get played with too. Because um, after the bar fight scene, she looks bedraggled. For, for, a for, for a moment. minute. Yeah, but. for a brief moment. Um, the gentleman who ran the bar, who looked like Zac Efron. Ryan Don Levy, who you just watched as an old man in Curse of the Fly. Which I also enjoyed. <laughs> I'd recommend that film. Yeah. That's I great. actually like, well, I mean, I like Fly with Joel, Jeff Goldblum. Mm -hmm. I like the second one with the redhead. Eric Stoltz. I like that one. Mm -hmm. And then I liked. Curse of the Fly. So those are the three I've seen? Mm-hmm. 
Is there another one? Yeah, there's a Vincent Price did a direct sequel that I, I don't think you've watched oh. the original. Anyway. I digress, but uh, this film, do you have anything else to say about it? Oh, uh, yes. Uh, the, the director, uh, George Marshall, was kind of a jack of all trades. Uh, he was probably best remembered for How the West Was Won. Uh, he also did The Blue Dahlia, which is a pretty good film noir with Veronica Lake, which I think I dragged you to a Veronica Lake feature. Okay. Um, this is also notably Jimmy Stewart's uh, first foray into the Western. This was. Uh, Film back to back with uh, Mr. Smith Goes to Washington, which hadn't released then. So he was notable, but not a huge star. Um, and I think him and Stewart, Stewart and Dietrich kind of do work, um, but it's a lot like, um, to me, Mae West and Cary Grant, uh, and she done him wrong. It's, and I could see this woman eating this man. Uh, okay. uh, yeah, I don't like. I like. I love Una Merkel. I like the whole cast. Uh, it was shot by Hal Moore, who won an Oscar for the 1943 version of Phantom of the Opera. Oh, and shout out to uh, Lillian Yarbo, who plays Clara, her assistant, because you know there's a, a long tradition of there. There were some black women in film, also always in those roles, but along with Butterfly McQueen and Teresa Harris, you know she. Okay. Just give her a little credit. Um, it was also based on a novel by Max Brand, so very loosely based. Uh, and Max Brand was um, the reason we had the, had the Dr. Kildare series as well. Great. Um, yeah. Okay. I would give this film three and a half out of five stars. Uh, and I would also give it three and a half out of five stars. And Criterion's release, four out of five. Uh, just quickly, uh, it's a 4K restoration. There's an interview with critic Imogene Sarah Smith. Uh, there's uh, an interview with a James Stewart biographer. There's uh, illustrated audio excerpts from a 1973 interview featuring George Marshall from at the uh, American Film Institute. And uh, there's a Lux Radio Theater adaptation from 1945 with Stuart reprising his role in Frenchie voiced by Joan Blondell. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Are you done? Yeah. Bye. Bye.